Hey YouTube, here's a short video to show my Commodore 64 data set placement device that I've built. So this interfaces with the Commodore 64 and to be able to accept tape data stored on a micro SD card or USB. So what it's got inside is an interface circuit and an MP3 player, all of which I've wired up so it's powered directly from the Commodore 64 so this is really nice, it has no external cables or anything like that. Um, I used a Commodore 64 game cartridge so it looks very nice and somewhat of, somewhat uh, official. There's rubber feet to keep it from... Uh, make sure it sits very solid and firm and allows you to press the buttons while it's attached. Buttons being tracked back forward, play and pause and a mode button that I don't use. Uh, there's also a remote control for it, which is especially useful for the high track numbers, save you having to click through all the way. And the ports of this is a USB port. It can handle a USB thumb drive up to 4 gig and or a micro SD card, which I've got in there currently. And it can handle micro SD or trans flash up to 8 gig. And here's the on-off switch, which I just always leave on because it turns on when the C64 turns on. And this is the port that I've covered up because that is originally was originally used to power this. But of course now the Commodore 64 is powering the unit. There's no need for that. And if someone did connect both, it would fry something. So that's why I've covered that up. So I'll turn it on. And it just automatically started playing where I was up to. Let's pause. Seeing as the C64 isn't ready at the moment. So now I'll just choose a game to load. We'll go Great Diana Sisters. So track 50. Right there. And this list uh, is a list of games that I've put on here. So I'll just get ready to load. So hold Commodore and press run stop. Just, just lost some focus. There. Now it's ready to load, and we'll notice that the drive light has turned on. This is the a little light that I've added that indicates the current status of the data set. So if this was an actual data set, if this light's on, it means the wheels are turning. So I'll start playing. Oh, I haven't chosen 50 yet. Forgot that. Uh, 50. Okay. Then I've chosen 50. Now Giannis Sisters can load up. After about 15 seconds, it'll say it's found the loader. And I'll just press the Commodore key quickly to get past that and let it keep loading. There. You may notice for a second that the light turned off. And that means that the data set would have paused at that time. If you had a real cassette tape, it would have stopped playing and waited for you to press Commodore or timed out after a while and press then played by itself. So the reason I'm choosing Gianna Sisters, other than it being a great game, is it has a pause point during its loading at the title screen, so I can indicate, I can show to you uh, what you has to be done at this time. Um, so this is a complicated, as complicated as it'll get, and I'll just show you. So when it finally gets to Gianna Sisters, title screen, you'll notice that light will go off, we will have to press pause to prevent the Commodore 64 and the tape deck um, and the player becoming out of sync. We can use the remote for that as well. Press play and pause from here. Okay, we'll see now. Perfect. Light went off, so I've paused it where it says Time Warp Productions. Skip past that. And here's Gianna Sisters screen. Light's still off. Um, right, so now if I skip past this, that's some terrible graphics I draw. Terrible loading screen graphics. Title screen graphics. But the music in the game itself is good enough, so we'll let it slide. So now I'm just going to skip past this, press space. Notice that the light's gone back on, so it's ready to accept more data. Now when we're ready, we'll press play. So I'll just use the remote to 
press play, so we see it's paused. Now it's going to resume loading the game. And there it is. So, pausing at the right time, you've got about three or four seconds leeway. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And pressing play again once the light goes on, it's just whenever you're ready. The Commodore 64 is ready to accept more data, so when you're ready, press play. So the way I got games on here, which uh, was not very difficult, but somewhat time consuming I guess for me to do all of them, but picked out all the games that I thought I'd want to play, is I found the dot tap data from various online sources. Um, I can put a link up to those. Then I used a program called tap to wav What that did is converted them to uncompressed audio and then I just converted those back down to mp3s to make them smaller and for this player. I'll put some more details in the description about that. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But not very high quality mp3s were required to make it work. Quite surprisingly actually. Um, just while it's loading, this is my custom C64 case. And this is a C64C motherboard and keyboard inside a VIC-20 case, which I've modified very slightly. It's got the labels from a bread box, C64, so the power and the Commodore emblem. And just here is the ports. dark but that's the a port there's a metal panel in front of those ports and that's also from a bread box 